The one thing that we can do here in a second, we'll kind of go work through the forecast again for the rest of the night tonight and look at tomorrow because we do have a first alert day in effect for tomorrow too. So let's pull up those graphics full here. We'll walk through what we're looking at in terms of our forecast for tomorrow, and then we'll keep an eye on this cell and the rest of the cells that we have because we do have some rainfall working into Olmstead County and then into Freeborn County and even all the way back uh, into Winnebago County at this point in time. So we'll kind of work through all of that. I want to just touch base on some of those forecast details that we have for the rest of the night tonight and look at for tomorrow too. So we have the tornado warning right now in Dodge County until 715. I do think we'll have some strong thunderstorms continuing tonight, maybe even some heavy downpours. I can kind of look off to my left here and we're getting some rainfall here on the northwest side of town. So we'll have some rain, some thunderstorm activity again for tonight. Tomorrow, we look at the potential for some strong, too severe thunderstorms again tomorrow, a level three out of five. Yes, we have the tornado warning right now. Tomorrow, probably a little bit more widespread. Notice the level three that is all across southern Minnesota and northern Iowa. This is kind of our first real taste of uh, some strong thunderstorms. Everything has kind of stayed just down to our south so far this spring. Tomorrow will be no different. It's just a little bit more widespread all the way up north of I-90. The primary threat for the really strong thunderstorms tomorrow will be I-80, and that'll be stretching from about Des Moines, Iowa City, just south of Cedar Rapids, and then towards the Quad Cities and Davenport. That's where we have a level four out of five uh, from the Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma. So that weather timeline here tonight, we have those scattered showers and thunderstorms. They started already, so a little earlier than uh, anticipated. So we're looking at from now until about 7 a.m., we get to have areas anywhere from a quarter to even an inch of rainfall. That isolated storm threat continues here tonight. We have the land spouts, so everything's surface-based. So we'll have land spouts possible. Yes, those are still tornadoes they can still do some damage and then as we look look towards tomorrow some scattered showers and thunderstorms in the morning the primary threat for the really strong thunderstorms will come into the forecast after three o'clock tomorrow afternoon so from three to nine p.m that is when we see the threat for maybe some widespread wind hail and even some tornadoes possible we have flood watches in effect for areas along and west of I-35, so maybe some flash flooding possible, some ponding, some pooling, especially if we have rainfall amounts. Go ahead, Sarah. Oh, viewer photo three? Yes, viewer okay. photo three. Okay, perfect. We have, uh, we do have confirmation of some quarter-size hail in okay. Hayfield. So quarter, viewer photo three has a great representation of how to, uh, when, when you are reporting hail, a great way how to show the size comparison. Okay, so that's in viewer photo three? Yep, viewer okay. photo three. I'll pop that up here in a second. So flash flooding, a concern on the way for maybe the rest of the night and tomorrow. Just looking at tomorrow, we're looking at uh, heavy downpours likely, strong wind likely, and then uh, tornadoes and hail possible uh, for tomorrow. So Sarah just said that uh, she got uh, some confirmation of some hail in one of our viewer photos here. So here's a look at uh, the hail. This is from Nick in Hayfield. So that matches our hail product that I, that I just showed a second ago that our hail product showed close to quarter-sized hail. Notice Nick here took a photo. It, the hail is melted just a little bit, uh, but uh, about quarter-sized hail there is uh, what we have in Hayfield. So hail, and we have that tornado warning right now. I know we've been, ta I've been talking a little bit about tomorrow, but let's go back uh, to that uh, tornado warning. So we still have that in effect, again, until 7.15 here tonight. And it has weakened a little bit. I can just tell by reflectivity. Earlier, we kind of had a cluster of lightning bolts, right? That's a good indication of how strong a thunderstorm is, is how much lightning it is producing. The cluster of lightning, not as impressive as we only have one, two, three, four, five, six different little lightning bolts right in this area. And then the reflectivity, some heavy rainfall probably taking place just to the north, northeast of Hayfield. So that's probably just, that's just east of that uh, Minnesota 56 here. So we'll pop up our velocity tool. And it does look like now that the best chance for maybe some rotation would be in these brighter greens. 
So right along Minnesota 30, you still could have maybe some broad rotation right along Minnesota 56 and the interchange there, Minnesota 56 and Minnesota 30 here. So right near Hayfield. So again, if you're within the polygon, it, the, your safest place to be is inside. That does include Casson, Dodge Center too. Again, this uh, cell has had the history of producing that land spout that made it down to the ground. Uh, Brock, it, no, no confirmation of anything. Do you have anything? So we did contact Dodge County Sheriff's Office dispatch there in Dodge County, and understandably, Nick, uh, they are swamped right now taking calls from people. Our understanding is, is these are people just telling them what they saw. At this time, we don't have any reports of any damage. That doesn't mean there isn't damage occurring. But right now, the Sheriff's Dispatch Center there in uh, Dodge County is saying that they just don't have anyone who can talk with us at this time because of the influx of calls they are getting. I do want to, Nick, give you a couple of seconds there to catch your, catch your breath as you've been keeping everybody informed. But we are getting a lot of viewer-submitted photos into our uh, newsroom. And the one thing that we wanted to talk to you a little bit about is how is the best way for you to get those to us. If you go to our homepage, ktdc.com, you're going to see a tab on our website. It's called Community. If you go to Community and then scroll down almost to the bottom, you're going to see a link that says Submit Photos and view Videos. That is where we would prefer you to send us your images and your videos. That said, as always, in a severe weather situation, your safety is top of mind. So do not put your in jeopardy to get us these videos and pictures. While we appreciate them and we, we, we enjoy being able to give you credit for sharing them with us, of course, your safe safety is paramount here, you, yours along with your loved ones. So anytime, as Nick and Sarah have been alluding to here, we are in this type of situation, you want to make sure you are in your safe place. But once the threat of severe weather has passed your area, and if you're able to still get some of those photos, we certainly want to see them. So again, ktdc.com, click on our community link. Everything you need to know to get photos and videos to us um, is, is listed there, Nick. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to continue to get more in. And as you mentioned here, this is kind of the start of what could be a very busy day tomorrow. Uh, yeah, it really could be, Brock. And uh, appreciate uh, you giving me a little break there to just take a drink of water just for one little second. Um, yeah, it, it, it'll be a busy night tonight. It'll be a busy day again tomorrow. Uh, so the time now is uh, we're looking at 7.06. So we still have uh, just under 10 minutes left of this warning. Uh, another viewer photo here. Brock was telling you uh, a very easy way to submit some of those photos or videos on our website. <clears throat> you can also join our first alert to uh, Okay, perfect. We'll get to that in a second. You can also join our first alert uh, uh, photo community group on Facebook. Just search KTDC Weather Photo Community Group on Facebook. Uh, you can join there. I think we've already had quite a few photos, too. Do you have something else, Brock? I, I do. Uh, my colleague, Caitlin Alexander, just sent me a message. Um, sirens right now, Nick, going off in Casson. Okay. So we want to take a look maybe at Casson right now to see what the situation is there. Okay. Yeah, they would be, Casson, I believe, is within the polygon, um, so that would make sense. Let's, let's pop up a max full here for me, Samantha, and I do believe, yeah, Casson is within the polygon of the tornado warning. Um, so that is why we would have Manorville, uh, Dodge Center, Casson. Byron is not in, so the, the polygon is drawn right along the Olmstead dodge County line here. Um, so that is, so nowhere in Olmstead County is uh, within that polygon, but that is why if you're tuning in from Casson or Manorville or Dodge Center or Hayfield, uh, that is why you, maybe your sirens are going off at this, uh, at, at this point in time. Uh, I believe my producer, uh, Leah, you did say that you had another photo. So let's, let's take a look at that. Okay, so no name for the photo, but uh, this is coming in from Dodge County. And again, so that is uh, the potential land spout here, at least a funnel that we're seeing right now again in Dodge County. So we have had confirmation that it has reached down to the ground at uh, one point in time. Uh, we did get confirmation from the National Weather Service that... These land spouts will be possible with a lot of these cells here tonight as they are very surface-based, which means they have a very low cloud deck and they are very close 
uh, to the surface here. So I would not be surprised if we see some more funnels with uh, some of these cells coming up through the rest of the night. Let's pop back over to our Max computer here. So we kind of have this line of storm starting to develop and it's all right along a stationary boundary. So these cells really aren't moving much here. Uh, tonight. So again, severe thunderstorm watch. The watch will pop that up here. And uh, they did kind of extend this watch. So it's pretty much most of southern Minnesota right now. So we're really looking at everywhere, um, Highway 52 and to the west here tonight. The severe thunderstorm watch will be in effect until midnight here tonight. I do want to get some more information on just the wording of the, the watch here tonight. Um, the wording really, they don't really... The National Weather Service didn't put anything in here uh, specific that they're watching out for for tonight. Uh, I do think some hail and obviously these quick spin up uh, land spout tornadoes uh, will be the primary threats. Um, I haven't uh, really gotten any confirmation or uh, any viewer reports of any type of strong wind associated with this cell that is in Dodge County or even into Olmstead right now. I can't. I can look at uh, what velocity thinks the wind is at right now. Your velocity, you're looking at 31 miles per hour, and that's up. That's not at the surface. That's kind of at the cloud base here. Um, so not extremely strong wind. Again, you have to get um, close. You have to be at least at 58 to 60 miles per hour. Brock, did you have something? Well, Nick, Nick we, we were talking earlier, and, and you made a good point here. Uh, sometimes we repeat information, but that's right. because we know people are just tuning in. Are just in. tuning in. Exactly. So I'm monitoring. Um, this is going live right now, obviously, on our Facebook page. And a number of the questions are, again, why are we calling this a land spout instead of a tornado? So people have kind of missed this, and you mm -hmm. did a great job explaining it, not to take you off track here. But I am seeing a number of people wondering the difference there. Right. So the biggest difference is... And I can show through some of these photos here. So what's happening is these cells are very surface based. So meaning they're really, really close down to the ground. And what happens is you can kind of get rotation down towards the surface that then works its way back up if it's strong enough. Um, and it, it's kind of the same thing that would almost happen with a cold air funnel sometimes. And this, I got to find that to viewer photo that depicted it pretty well here, um, this one right here. So this viewer photo, it kind of it shows what I'm talking about. And I'll, I'll go to the wall here so I can kind of point at it and show people. So this is from Gary in Blooming Prairie. So notice it's almost, it's really faint for me to see it all the way back up to the cloud deck. Okay, and when I say cloud deck, that is the bottom of the cloud. That is the base of the clouds. Notice that uh, it kind of dissipates, but then it's very dark. Now, maybe it's picking up some degree, debris. That could be a reason why it's darker. But with a land spout, since it's forming down towards the surface, this is where your strongest rotation is at. And then it works its way back up, up towards the base of the clouds. Instead of the rotation starting here and then going down to the ground, it's starting at the surface and then going back up to the base of the clouds. And again, this can still do damage. So that is why we've had the tornado warning in effect with it. And again, the tornado warning still in effect until 7.15 here tonight. So hopefully that can kind of answer some of those questions. Brock, do you have some more? If So we are live on Facebook right now? We are, we are live on Facebook and we have a number of people following us. Uh, right now, I'm just, again, I'm gonna report what I'm hearing and seeing from viewers. Sure. Again, they are our eyes out and about. Right. Um, this is not official from any law enforcement, but now we are being told on Facebook that sirens are going off in Dodge Center right. as well and a second time in Casson. Okay, which, which would make sense. Um, I, I don't, I'm not entirely sure how the county decides. Um, some counties are different where if there's a polygon in that county, the, all the sirens within the county goes off. That's not how Olmstead is. They can kind of pick and choose which section of the county or even the city of Rochester if the polygon only includes the southern metro of Rochester but doesn't include northwest. The sirens won't sound in northwest Rochester, but they will, uh, say, in southern Rochester. Um, I will say just looking at this quickly, the hail core, if I... Now, if, 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 I'm re, if I'm looking at this correctly, okay, we probably have some type of hail core right in this vicinity 
Um, so that's just down to the south of Casson and just south of, say, Highway 14, just west of Rockdale and Salem. So if I flip over, and there's our hail core. So the hail core is just a second behind, but that's looking to be larger than quarter-sized hail. So now we're getting, this is radar estimated, and we'll see if we get any confirmation from viewers here tonight. And maybe if you're tuning in from Facebook and you're in Dodge Center, you can let Brock know, so then he can let me know. Uh, radar estimated ping-pong ball-sized hail now, and that is just south of Casson. Uh, I can zoom this in to try to see if we can get some more street names. I do hear some sounds going off here. Okay, so, uh, all right, so Claremont, so I'll check that too. So we, uh, our, my producer, Leah, just said a potential. Did you have something, Sarah? Yeah, so the uh, reason we were hearing our noise in production is there is now a severe thunderstorm warning for Dodge and Olmstead County. Okay, so they so just... So one inch hail and wind up to 50 miles per hour. And this will be until 8.15 this evening. Oh, wow. Until 8.15? Mm-hmm. Okay. So there's the severe thunderstorm warning. So the National Weather Service has now issued, and I'll walk over to the wall here. So we have that severe thunderstorm warning. You said until 8.15 for the next hour? Okay. So that is a really long warning from the Weather Service. The storm How, is moving. It is right. moving east at 15 miles per hour, which is a okay. Yeah, bit I, of yeah. a slow mover. Right. It's it's just at 15 miles per hour, so it's it's moving really slow. So they did take off. They just took off the tornado warning. So there is there is no tornado warning. So they let that expire. So it is it is now 7:15, and now we have uh, a severe thunderstorm warning in effect. Large hail now. Uh, so we just looked at ping pong ball sized hail potentially right in this vicinity here. So right just south of Highway 14, just south of Byron, Rockdale. I would head to your safe place. This has had the history of producing a land spout or a tornado reaching down to the ground. So I would head to your safe place, even if you're still in Dodge County. Hayfield, you're not, you're not in the Polygon or Dodge Center. I would still stay inside, stay in your safe place. There's still some heavy rainfall and maybe even a pocket of hail uh, right along Minnesota 30, just back off to the west of Hayfield. So now this severe thunderstorm warning issued, this does include the city of Rochester. So all of the city of Rochester and pretty close to Stewartville and all the way out to near Marion does include Byron, pretty much all areas along Highway 14, any area that is west of the metro here, so west of Rochester. This is in effect tonight until 8.15. So this severe thunderstorm warning in effect for the next hour. Wind speed less than 50 miles per hour, pretty much warned for the hail. So now uh, capable of producing anywhere from quarter to ping pong ball sized hail. So again, severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 8.15 here tonight. I do want to check in on that hail core uh, again. Brock, do we have any other any qu other, other questions on our social media feed that maybe I can answer here while we're still live on yeah. air? Right, Nick. So I, I, I know you're taking a look at the, the hail here, but one thing that we are seeing a lot of and I think could be helpful for folks as they're trying to prepare for this, knowing now that we have this additional warning now for Olmstead County for another hour almost, is if when you have a chance, can you put a track on this for us and oh, kind of, of give an idea as to what communities might be impacted if this all holds together? Right. No, that would be fantastic. That is one thing that I forgot to do. That is something that you should always do, should always have a track on this. The thing is, these storms are moving extremely s slow. Um, so Sarah did just say that uh, the cell is moving at 15 miles per hour, right, Sarah? Yeah, 15 miles per hour. Okay, so moving due east at 15 miles per hour. So I'll put a track on just the edge of this polygon, and then we'll just draw this all the way out to the end here. So that gets us to Rochester. So if we're looking at where that hail core is at, as it moves to the east at 15 miles per hour, not impacting Rochester until about 735. So give or take five to 10 minutes. So you're probably looking at 730 to 740 
uh, for the center of that hail core to start to approach uh, Rochester again if it holds um, together through the next hour. Again, that's a really long duration for a severe thunderstorm warning. So we'll see if it holds together or not uh, for the next hour here tonight. I do want to pop that hail core back on so we can get a, a good track of where exactly that hail core is at. So it's a little farther uh, to the east here. So we'll draw the cone right through that hail core and get it to the end of the polygon. So it's still looking at anywhere from 730 to 740 here in Rochester. Byron, the hail reaching you potentially by about uh, 725 to 730. And we do have some more hail back to the west here, so just west of Hayfield. So we have another hail core. That that bright blue right there, that's pretty close to quarter-sized hail. I did see a couple of viewer photos uh, just a second ago on Sarah's computer that would verify that we're pretty close close to, to nickel to quarter sized hail. The good news is just looking at our hail detection other than this one cell that is now moving into Eastern Dodge and Western Olmsted, the other cells that are back to the, the west here, maybe right near the 69 marker, maybe some small hail, but uh, the ones that we're seeing up in Freeborn County at this point in time, not uh, producing uh, the, the large hail uh, at this time. So with us, with the severe thunderstorm warning, if you can come back to me on camera here, uh, since we just have a severe thunderstorm warning at this point in time until 8.15. So I just want to give you the quick rundown and then we'll send you, send you back to regular scheduled programming here. So we've had, have had the history of producing tornadic activity. So whether that's a tornado, land spout, they're essentially the same thing. It's just they're different how they form. We'll keep an eye on that here tonight. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if we do see some funnels or some land spouts with some of these surface-based storms here tonight. We have that severe thunderstorm warning still in effect until 8.15. That includes into portions of Olmsted County. That does include the city of Rochester. So we will have a severe thunderstorm warning until 8.15 here tonight. This cell has had the capability of producing a tornado. So again, be on alert through the next 30 to say 60 minutes. We'll continue to keep you updated about every 10 to 15 minutes or so on air and online uh, through the next uh, hour as long as we have this warning. We also have a severe thunderstorm watch before I send you back to regular scheduled programming. We have a severe thunderstorm watch in effect for all areas in pink. That is in effect until midnight tonight. So that in, does include the majority of southern Minnesota and northern Iowa. The counties that are not in that watch include Goodhue, Winona, Houston, and then a couple of our northern Iowa counties. So the bulk of us will have that severe thunderstorm watch in effect until midnight. We have that severe thunderstorm warning in effect for Rochester until 8.15 tonight. So we'll pop in and out of broadcast here through the next hour. Uh, for now, though, thank you for tuning in. We'll continue to answer some questions on social media. And again, make sure to download that free First Alert weather app to stay up to date not only for the rest of the night tonight, but also for tomorrow where we have a level three out of five risk of severe weather. Thanks for joining in here tonight. Again, we'll pop in when needed here through the rest of the evening. For now, we'll send you back to regular scheduled programming.